Almost every prison that has ever been built in Minecraft has restricted itself to just one cell. But I think we can do more. What if you wanted to trap every single player in an SMP to gain control over the entire server and obtain all the flexing rights at the same time? Here it is, 57 perfectly inescapable cells, each with its own bed in a giant room made of regenerating netherite. Surrounded by defences so impenetrable, the time measured to break in is literally measured in months. So I present to you the Arctic Bastion. As usual, the redstone to make it work is very simple, with most of the circuitry going to the visitor process. This makes sure that the prisoners cannot take any items in. Now, this is a map that I'm going to be using to demonstrate part of the prison. For example, this part here is the water elevators. Now, these are made using soul sand to push any entities away from the chunk bands, and it is especially effective on withers. So, now that we've got the soul sand elevators, the walls are pretty much protected. But what's stopping soul from digging down from the roof? Well, I quite like this part because when they dig straight down from the top, it sets off a chain of observers that triggers the suicide switch. Now, what does that do? Well, essentially, it starts to ban all the nine different areas in the entire prison. So then the exit portal is activated, so the guards can leave the prison safely, and a fox is given an item that bans the central area, forever. And the chunk bands themselves are so far embedded in the obsidian that they cannot be blown up using TNT minecarts or withers. So I think that's pretty much the outside covered. Oh, and did I mention there's also a floor detector as well? Probably should have said that. What makes the main cells inescapable is the fact that the entire hallway is surrounded in regenerating netherite, and the way that works is by pushing a cobblestone generator up the walls, and as you can see here, it's very effective. Each cell also has a solitary confinement cell, making the total cell count to 113. When a solitary confinement is deactivated, the prisoner respawns directly in the cell because of a shulker system, where they are free to do whatever they like. There is also one maximum security cell, but it isn't very humane because there are no visitors allowed. So yep, that's pretty much all the cells covered, so now I think it's a good time to talk about the visitor process. The visitor process is arguably the most complex system in the entire prison, with many new technologies invented for it, and it almost takes up half of the entire map. So to begin a visit, once the players sent the Yetri bed, they go into the portal. From there, they work their way through the nether hub and into the inner portal, where they'll actually go into the prison. So once inside, the guard breaks the portal and closes it at the exact same time, so placing any blocks in this entry room is impossible. Then the guard triggers a chunk ban, which bans this certain area in the prison, which will make sure that the guard knows whoever left because of the leaving messages. Inside the prison they get mining fatigue 3 every single second, so breaking obsidian takes hours. Next, the visitor turns left into the locker rooms, so that they can store the item safely and locking it with a keycard. After that, they go on a two-player checker, where if an invisible player attempts to enter the prison, they'll be noticed by a weighted pressure plate. Then the player goes to the first kill check, where they set their spawn point on a bed, and they get killed with harming potions. This will respawn them on the other side, where they can move on to the next part, which is equipping them with a full set of Curse of Binding Armor, so that they can't equip themselves with any other armor later on. 
Also Chunk Band to help design a system that checks for items in a player's inventory without killing them. And this involves spitting out a load of buy glasses, which are unstackable items into their inventory. Then they move over to the next kill check, which will be the final kill check before they enter the cell. Again, they are killed with harming potions, and when they respawn on the other side, they are re-equipped with a full set of armor. They can travel down and throw a pile into the stasis chamber, so that they can be warped out of the cell later on. Then the prisoners moved into a swim hallway, where they'll swim down to another drop shaft, where it will separate the visitors from the prisoners, just like in the pyramid. Then they'll be given an ender pile, so that they can pile glitch up through the wall, and then they're in the cell to visit the prisoner. running. <laughs> Hello there. I've Hello there! <laughs> I've been <laughs> wanting to visit you since uh, about five minutes ago. Now that I think about it, actually I'm gonna go now. See ya. Uh, thank you! Uh, nice to see you! Nice to see you guys! Once the visit is over, the visitor is walked out of the cell from the stasis chamber that they used earlier. Then they can go use the locker again and reobtain the items and then move back into the portal. Once they're back into the overworld, they can go set their bed so that their spawn point is outside of the prison and move on with their day-to-day -day lives. So you're stuck in a prison that's protected from all sides with hundreds of trap portals and emergency systems and you're thinking to yourself, how can you get yourself out of this mess? Well, the guards can actually walk you out of the cells, bring you back to the solitary confinement, and let you set your spawn point on an obstructed bed to actually walk you outside of the prison so you can get let out after your sentence is done. So this is probably one of the most humane prisons that I've ever built. Unless you're in the maximum security cell, uh, in which that case, you're pretty much there forever. Massive shout out goes to Biting Flob and Chunkband for helping build the prison, and Ten Nitro and Architects for helping build the outside. There were some people who tried to do beta testing, but in the end used the map for self promotion and their own gain. So, yeah, thank you everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>